All right, so we're going to be doing a continuation of the tutorial series here for the Let's Play of Euro Truck Simulator 2. And something that I missed out on showing uh, earlier uh, because uh, my mic was muted is the logo that I had selected. I realized later uh, looks a lot like a French rondelle. So I'd like to change that. And this gives me an opportunity to show you guys how to do that. So I just clicked on that profile button and at this point I can edit the profile. So this might come and play for you. Let's say you started your pro your campaign with your profile and you couldn't really think of a company name and instead uh, you've thought of one later and you want to change it. So in that case you could do that right now. You can change the picture of your of your character you can change your company logo and as i was saying i didn't realize at the time uh but this looks a lot like a french rondelle i just looked at it and i saw the gears and i, I selected that so we're going to change to this one uh, it's got arrows which uh, that could be appropriate for the movers part of our company and Hopefully it doesn't have any nationalistic undertones that I don't notice. So we're going to go ahead and apply that, and that shouldn't affect our save file at all. We're going to go ahead and continue campaign for our game. Okay, so now that we've done that, there's one other thing that I'd like to go over. And this isn't going to come into play right away, but we're going to go to audio. And under audio, uh, we have uh, the voice navigation. So I've already turned this on beforehand, but by default, this is going to be deselected. So just check the box. And again, nothing's going to be selected here. All you have to do is click on the drop down menu. And depending on what language you speak, if English is not your first language, you have other alternatives. I'm not sure if uh, you will necessarily find the language that you speak, but hopefully you do find it if that's what you want to do. But if you don't find that, that's okay. Uh, hopefully you speak English because you're listening to me do this in English. Uh, and you have three different variations of two different voices, one male, one female. So I've selected uh, the, Eng uh, the UK version of Sky for this tutorial because it's Euro Truck Simulator. For American Truck Simulator, I had the US version of Doug. And just to show you what the, all this sounds like, you can hit the preview and I've cranked up the volume so you can hear it clearly. Drive safe. Finally, we are here. Recomputing. And then of course, Doug US, this is what I have in American Truck Simulator. Make a U-turn. Caution, please mind the speed limit. Go straight. So listen through these. Find whichever one you like and maybe give it a try. And that's what we're going to do throughout this section of the tutorial because this will really assist you. I didn't do it in that first section because I didn't want it to be a distraction. But I really do think it's a, a helpful thing, especially for a newer player. And sometimes there are situations where you don't really remember which company you're delivering to and you get to a section and there's two or three companies right in the same area. And the navigation, the, the little uh, display, it doesn't really make it clear which one you're supposed to go to. And there's one on the left, there's one on the right, and you're like, well, which one do I turn into? This will let you know. It will go, prepare to turn right, and then it will say turn right when you get to where you need to go. And obviously it will do that during uh, navigation of other things too. So it really does help. Occasionally it will tell you the wrong thing. Like it will say prepare to turn left, and then it will say turn right. So you do have to pay a little bit of attention to the navigation screen and what you're expected to do, but it still helps and is probably something that you'd want to do as a beginning player. So with that being said, uh, leading up to this in the previous part that I did, I recommended that you get to level six to progress here. If you haven't gotten there yet, that's okay. We'll just go ahead with this and you can wait to Get to this point yourself uh, if you're following along or, uh, you know, you can do this now if you so choose. I do recommend you get to level six for a set reason and we'll, we'll go over why that is. But uh, either way, you know, this is just a guide. You don't have to follow this ex exactly as I do it. But we're going to buy a truck. Before we do that, though, I can pretty much guarantee you I can't afford one because at this point, 
with my playthrough, getting to level 6, I didn't raise uh, quite enough for 70,000 euros. We'll just round it up a little bit to 70,000 euros. So I'm a little bit under that. You may make a little bit more than I did or a little bit less than I did. Uh, but either way, just showing you on the progress bar, I actually went a little bit beyond what I even needed for level 6. That's just because the last job I did was a little bit more of a long haul job. And it paid me a lot and experience and money. So, again, you don't have to be exactly at the same point I'm at, either financially or what have you. If you got to level 6, you should at least have enough money to do what I'm about to do. So, we are going to need a bank loan. And as I discussed in the previous section, uh, you will eventually get the larger loan amount. And you, by the time you get to level three, you should have unlocked an allowance of 500,000 euros for a loan. So you have four choices here. And depending on how you do this, so as you go up, the interest rate will go up. I'm sorry, go down. As you go up an amount, the interest rate will go down. So if I select this one, uh, it's at 18%. Whereas if I select 10,000, it's a 23%. And the lowest interest rate is going to be under 400,000. But there is a trick with the 400,000 one in that it's 70 day repayment period versus 35. So if you're wondering when you're looking at 100,000 euros, it shows you how many euros you're going to have to pay a day back. The amount here isn't, I mean, it's like four times as much, but it's like, that doesn't compute. It's because you're having to pay it back in half the amount of time. Either way, we are going to take this first loan. Now, as we said, you do have to pay this a day. So I'm hoping by the time you get to level six here, you have a little bit more experience and you're able to make enough profit margin for this. I'm not too worried about this. This I'd be a little bit more worried about for a newer player. This I'm not so worried about. Now, if you want to play this game until you get enough money to afford your truck without having to take a loan, that is a perfectly viable tactic and you do not have to do this, what I'm about to do. This is just to expedite things. And I think level six is a good point if you do want to take that loan and you don't mind doing so uh, to take it. So we just hit yes on this menu and then our loan payment will show up here. So our loan, uh, how much we have to uh, repay, how many days we have on that loan. Currently, we haven't paid anything into it. So we're at zero. What the interest rate is, what our installment payment is a day. So this just kind of reminds us. And if we wanted to, we could repay it right now. That's what that button is. Now, if we drop our money below this, this button will disappear. I mean, you'll still see the, the grayed out repay, but you won't be able to select this. Wouldn't make much sense for us to, to repay it. So let's just go ahead and continue forward. So now we have to purchase our truck. So we're going to click on the truck dealership. And hopefully, as you have played through your quick jobs, you have tried to do as I kind of showed you, which is to discover a lot of the question marks in the different towns. And I made an effort to try and unlock all of the different dealerships. You don't have to do that. And I did recommend you start with a Volvo dealership as well, your Volvo truck as your starting truck. And if you did do that, that's actually kind of a, a very good thing because it doesn't seem like there are really that many Volvo dealerships. I was only able to find one in Germany. I think there is another one with a little bit of re research. I think Nuremberg has one too. But if you haven't found a Volvo dealership and you didn't pick one as your first one, but you really ended up later deciding you wanted one, uh, just travel over to uh, this city or this city in Germany. And if you're not in Germany, the only other one I know of offhand because I have an Italian campaign running right now is there is one in Naples. But yeah, the Volvo dealerships are a little trickier to find. Like for example, Iveco, I found multiple of these, but uh, I only found one Volvo dealership. So again, I recommend the Volvo FH Classic as your first truck. But you don't have to listen to me again. By this time, you should have had plenty of opportunity to try out other trucks. And if you decide that you like another truck better, go for that. In any case, I'm going to go with the Mercedes Benz in this case, and I'm going to travel here. Now, I will point out, you are fast traveling to this location. So if we come back out here, our current time is 041. So if I were to click on this location, the Mercedes Benz dealership, we first have to visit it. Now there is a buy online option, but until you have five trucks, you can't do this. So that would save us this bit of fast traveling that we have to do. But in our case, we don't have that availability. So we will have to vi uh, visit it directly. You'll see once we're done with all of this, the time will indeed pass as, us, uh, as we have had to fast travel here. So let's go ahead and visit that selected dealer. Okay, so we are going there. Yes, we would like to go there. 
Okay, so I'm at the Mercedes-Benz uh, dealership. I don't want the Actros, I want the new Actros, so I just hit this arrow until I find the one I want. Now, you will see that there's 12 selections here. Many of these outside the first two that I have for the Mercedes are just going to be different variants. Now, I have to be level 14 to even have this one, so I, I can't select really anything beyond those first two. So the first two are going to be more or less the stock setup. There's going to be a couple things we can tweak. But we could just hit purchase and immediately purchase it for this price. You also have a button here for trading in. If you already had a truck, you could trade it in. I personally don't recommend that as you lose a lot of the value on the truck. And our goal eventually is going to start our own company. And we can take the truck that we're about to buy here and pass it on to one of our employees. And then let's say later on the road, we get more upgrades and we want to get a better truck for ourselves. I personally think financially, it makes more sense to buy that truck with its upgrades from scratch rather than trying to discount it by getting rid of our, our old truck. But that's just my personal preference and, and how I play. And then our third button is customized configuration. And by the way, just to go back a little bit on that, that also go, is true with the fact that you can upgrade a truck that you purchase by going to a service shop. You can install new parts in there. Again, I don't recommend that. I, I think you're better off buying a truck with new uh, upgrades rather than uh, installing them because, again, you lose value off of your old parts. It does discount the new upgrades by doing that, but you don't get the full value of the parts that you paid for in the first place. So again, that's just personal preference on my end. Uh, and maybe late in the game, you can do those kind of things if you really are, have fallen in love with your truck. But early on, I really don't recommend that any case, let's go ahead and customize configuration. And now we can set up the truck as we wish. So we can uh, tweak it a little bit, maybe save us some money. So again, the game plan is to start a company and have employees under us. So this first truck, I'm going to consider to be a stopgap truck. So I'm not going to set this up exactly how I would want it for this to be my truck for throughout the entire rest of the game. And I just want to make that clear. You are not stuck with this truck. You do not have to keep it. So if you later decide you don't like this truck, well, again, this is a stopgap. We can always pass it off to one of our employees and it's not that big of a deal. So uh, we can ch uh, choose our cabin. At the moment with our level, we don't really have any other choice. So we're just going to stick with this one, but that's okay. These are mostly cosmetic and they're going to cost you a lot of money for that cosmetics. And at the moment, we're trying to get the best banger for our buck. At least that's my goal. Again, we don't really have a choice here, but honestly, the 4x2 chassis is, is a really good starting point because they oftentimes, I'm not going to say 100% of the time, but they oftentimes have more fuel than any other chassis lo lo loadout. So this is a good starting point. Okay, well, because we waited till level 6, we do have an engine upgrade, and I don't see a reason why not to take that. It's not that much more expensive than the, the stock engine, so I'm going to go ahead and select this, and we'll see. The price does indeed go up, so we're up to 120000 For the gearbox, I highly recommend you take the one with the retarder. These two gearboxes are exactly the same, and we won't get another one until level 10. So again, we don't really have a whole lot of choices here, but the retarder, as again, I showcased in the, the previous bit here, is going to really help when you're putting cruise control on, and it just makes everything a little bit better. You'll also notice we have a stat being tracked here. So if I go back to our engine, and I select this engine, you'll watch these bars, and you'll see they change very slightly. Not a lot, but very slightly they change. One thing you might notice is normal cargo goes down, but heavy cargo goes up and hill traversal goes up. So pretty much is what this is telling us is because we have more power on our engine, we're able to haul heavier cargo at a little bit better proficiency and our ability to get up steeper inclines is also improved. I honestly don't know how I could tell you what the normal cargo really means. It says optimized for light and medium weight cargo transportation, but you could use a more powerful engine and transport this cargo just fine. Probably what you're thinking along these lines is if you're only going to be hauling lighter cargo, you don't really need that powerful of an engine. It's probably better on a fuel efficiency standpoint to be driving with a less powerful one, perhaps. But uh, it's not really, I think, that big of a thing to this. Uh, it is what it is. You can use a more powerful engine and, and transport normal cargo just fine. In any case, we're going to pick the retarder version, which is quite a bit more expensive but you'll note our stats went up yet again and we kind of regained what we lost there 
which I honestly think is kind of arbitrary there with how much that of gain was, but hill traversal I really do agree with because, well, it helps us going when we're going downhill when we have cruise control on, so it is very good for that. Okay, let's go ahead and switch over to the interior. You're not going to have a really a whole lot of choices here. It's just going to be your, your standard loadout, loadout or the UK loadout with the steering wheel on the other side. So that's all good. Okay, now our color. This can be entirely your preference, but this white color is the cheapest one. And if this is meant to just be a stopgap, well, that might be what I want to go with. But if you want something else, you want to have a, a more fancy paint scheme, go right ahead. But just note that the cost is going to uh, go up and up as we go here. And there's even the ones that are the fancy ones down at the bottom. But they're much, much more expensive. And you can also do uh, your own custom paint scheme. And then you have metallic paint schemes and all kinds of things. But as far as the custom paint scheme goes, you just, you just click on it. And then let's say you want green. And then you want, I don't know, like a more forest green, like a darker one. You just take this little guy and you put it where you need it. And then once you're done with that, I mean, that's it. Or you can you can say uh, keep as a preset and it will go into your little uh, paint bar down here, your little squares. And if you really like that color, you can save it for future if you're going to use it over and over and over again. So that's kind of how that works. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and just put it on this white because it's the cheapest color. And this is just meant to be a stopgap. Give us a truck for right now and we'll probably pass it on to one of our employees. So this bit is where you can set up a lot of your visual customization of the truck. Some of these are going to have a practical purpose, but most of these are just going to be cosmetics. So in our case, I'm going to try and save money. So one thing I would delete no matter what is this front mirror. I don't really use them. I don't really like them. And it costs 1500 euros. So I could just delete that and save myself a little bit of money. But all you have to do is just click on one of these circles and you'll see your options. Now, a lot of these you're not going to be able to do because you're not high enough level. Uh, but in our case, again, another thing that comes stock on the truck and I want to get rid of and just to get rid of something you just you click on it and if there's a red X underneath it that means you can delete it if you don't want it so in our case I'm going to delete the visor because it saves me another 2,000 plus euros so goodbye but something like the mirrors I can't delete this this needs to be on the truck so uh, there you have it so you can kind of click on these different uh, circles figure out what's all there what you want to keep and what you want to delete and if you want to put some cosmetic functions on like for example if you want to fancy up the side of your truck and put one of these guys on here on your side skirts you can do that just keep in mind it costs you a lot more money to do so so in this case i'm doing this to save money but you do whatever you feel comfortable with as a matter of fact this is something we can delete 480 euros not a lot of money but we can get rid of it This one I can't delete, I have to keep, so that's fine. There, there you go. There's another thing we can delete right there. That's 225 euros. Again, not a lot of money. We can just get rid of that. Save ourselves a tiny bit of money. And that should probably be it as far as the different things that we can do, but... You'll have these light bars, and these kind of are cool, just to show this real quick. So you... you Oh, okay, this one's a little bit different. Never mind. What's the one I'm looking for? I think this is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you click on this, and then you see these red circles. You'll be adding on various attachments. So you can put lights on, you can put horns on, what have you. It depends on the truck and what the, the options are, but that's something that you can add on. And one, if you don't want to select anything, or once you're done selecting something, you can click away. And then we just click on this again delete it because I don't actually want it but you can you can make your truck look as fancy as you want it to be if you want this thing to look real cool you go right ahead but I'm just going to go this from the very much uh best bang for buck style here and it's going to cost us 121,000 euros but I have much more allowance than that the one thing I'd advise just keep enough money on hand so you can do some expenses if you are traveling in certain countries, you may have to pay some tolls, uh, maybe save some money for a day or two of your loan installment if that makes you feel more comfortable. But either way, save a little bit of money just in case. 
All right, so that's gonna be it for the setup of our truck. Very basic, but I just wanted to go over some of that. Oh yeah, there's the interior part too. Usually speaking, the only thing you're gonna have in the interior uh, is going to be, there should be a little doodad that you can hang uh, from the uh, top section here if you want. And then other than that, and I honestly don't know how you get these. I've never played Rocket League, but I assume that's from Rocket League based off of the logo there. And then the other one that you oftentimes will be able to customize is going to be your steering wheel. Um, which I actually don't have the option for that in this... Oh, there it is. Never mind. The button right there. <laughs> but we are not high enough level to do that anyway. And then you have these red things. Uh, the red circles that you can add on some attachments. And again, these are entirely cosmetic. They don't do anything in the game. But if you like the little knobs or what have you, you can do that. But really, the steering wheel is the only thing you can customize inside. You can customize other things other than in, on the exterior, but it's the same selections you had here. It's not going to be any different. But it does give you a little bit of a look-see at what the things look like if you have multiple choices of mirrors or what have you. Okay, well, that's going to do it. So once we're done, we're going to hit confirm. If you end up deciding you don't want to do this, you can just hit the exit a uh, little icon over in the lower right corner. But for us, we're going to hit confirm. This will save all of our customization options. And now when we hit purchase, it will buy what we have set up rather than the stock setup. So we're going to go ahead and purchase. Okay. And you should get a cinematic here after you buy your first truck, which I'm assuming is loading in right now. And we now have access to the open world aspect of the game. So things are going to change quite a bit now that we have our own truck. All right, that's enough of the cinematic. I get the idea. So we have this smaller garage. And we really don't have the capacity to do anything with our company right now. Because our garage only has a slot for one truck. But now we get a lot of the interface stuff that we can look at. And we can see what's all going on here. So this is currently the garage we have. It can only hold one truck. If we want to increase that, we have to upgrade it. And the cost to do that is 180,000 euros. We're not going to do that yet. My goal is to do this at level 10. So if you're following along with this series, that's going to be our milestone to do this next bit. But this is going to take quite a bit of money to really get in place. That's something we're going to worry about in the future. What we're more worried about, though, is our driver manager. So we can come in right here and we can see what our performance as, our, as a player is. So we can see that we are currently making almost 17,000 euros a day. So I'm not too worried about that loan payment I just took because profit-wise, I can easily pay that off. Keep in mind, things will change though now that you have your own truck. You're no longer going to be instantly traveling to where the work is and being able to take whatever job you want. You have to take the jobs that are in the location you're at or you have to drive to where they are. So... That is the, the factor there. We can also see my level up and other things as we go. And with me, what I did is I put two in long distance, one in high value, one in fragile, and two in the just-in-time delivery. And the reason why I put two here is to allow me to have the, uh, the, the, the urgent deliveries. So I got the, uh, the important ones and the urgent ones. So I have both types of jobs. So outside of the hazardous cargo, I should have every delivery type. As I increase this stat, the long distance travel, I'll get more and more distance on those trips. But really all that's left for us to unlock is hazardous cargo. Now hazardous cargo tends to be very valuable. So you can change the order that you do your level ups in, but I kind of like this setup here. And if you ever owned another garage, you can relocate your drivers in your trucks and various things. Now, for as far as truck manager goes, we just come over here. It's a very similar interface, but it's just going to tell us about the truck in question. Uh, a little bit of stats about it, how much distance it has driven, who's currently driving it. Does, does it have a trailer? 
What is it currently doing? Where is it? All that kind of stuff. And if you are ever curious, once you have your own company, like how to track your drivers, this information here on the job info will give you a lot of insight on what they're doing, when they're doing it, and when they'll be done. But we'll get into a lot of that management stuff uh, later. Mostly we just are looking at this and being more certain of what profit margin are we getting? Uh, are we going to be okay with the loans we have and what have you? Okay, so... And that and us purchasing a truck has opened up a lot of different interface options. For example, you now have your vehicle adjustment. So you can click on this and you can adjust a lot of things about your truck, something you couldn't have done before. So you can reposition your seat, move it forward and back if you like that kind of thing, just for a personal preference. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to pop in here. And let's see. So I'm going to put my seat back a tad. Yeah. I, what I was trying to do with this is get my mirrors so they're more visible. But of course, the fear that I have if I do that is that uh, my ability to see things up towards the top of the screen is going to diminish as I do this. So, you know, honestly, I think I'm fine with that. But this is the kind of stuff you can adjust if you need to uh, to just make things more comfortable for you. But at this moment, ah, I think I'm fine with it. I'm all right with looking a little bit to the left to see my mirrors. So... It's all right. So that's something you can do. But let's now focus on the process of getting our next job. Also, you might notice these icons. This is what happens as you level up. You'll get uh, upgrades and it will give you a, a highlight of what upgrades you've gotten. And you can highlight particular brands. Like, for example, if you care about the Volvo, you know, you can see what unlocked with the last level up you did. Same thing with trailers, which you do now have the purchase, uh, the, the ability to purchase. I really highly recommend not worrying about that too much at the moment, though. All right, so now let's go on the job market. And unlike before, where we were always hitting quick job, we're now going to click on the freight market. So let's click on that. And now we have to worry about where we are. So our truck is currently being marked with the blue triangle. We're going to click on Berlin because that's where we are. That's going to make it so Berlin is the origin point for every job here. And now we determine what job do we want to take. So looking through this, there's a number of factors I'm looking at. I'm looking at the different types of jobs. So this is an urgent delivery. So they want this pretty quick and it's in a high value cargo. We can see the weight, it's 23 tons, where it's going. If I click on it, I get to see what the distance is. That's interesting. This is the shortest trip in Berlin right now. It's 229 kilometers. So where do they, when do they expect this? Oh, also, as I noted earlier, it was 041. Before we quick traveled to the dealership, it's now 843. So time did indeed pass, us going to that dealership and doing what we did. So they expect this on Thursday. So we ex we have we have a decent amount of time to do this. About 14 hours and it's only a 4 hour job. So this will probably pay quite well as we can see the 24.19 uh euros uh per kilometer. That's quite high. We can sort by price per distance if we want to. So this will put the highest value at the top. And that's close to the top. The only one that's higher than that would be Berlin to Copenhagen here, which I'm actually thinking about doing because I'd like to show you guys how ferries work. And we'd have to take a ferry. It's a very short trip, but you see the little dash line there? That is us having to get on a ship and go across. So I think I'm going to take this job because it has a dual factor going on for us. It is the highest paying job. Now, it's a long time, and but thankfully we have a lot of time to get there. Uh, to get the job. 9 hours, 44 minutes. When do they expect it? They expect it on Friday at 2 in the morning. So we have plenty of time to do this job. We have we have tons of time to do this job. So I'm not going to worry about that too much. But let's go over some other symbols before we just take this job and see if we find anything interesting. It looks like most of them are just going to be the urgent deliveries. This is your important delivery, the two uh, blue arrows. And obviously your standard one is just going to be the green one that we've always been seeing. So outside of important deliveries, I don't really see any other uh, different factors, even though we technically have the skills to be able to take those kind of jobs. So I'm going to go ahead and take this guy. So what are we uh, transporting? We're transporting forklifts. They're only 11 tons, so that's pretty good. 
And then other than that, we're going from Berlin into Copenhagen and we're going into Denmark. So let's go ahead and set that as a destination. Okay, I'm gonna adjust my mirrors how I like it. Let's go. And there we have Sky talking to us. Oh crap. Apparently I'm tired. I didn't expect that. <laughs> Uh, so we're not going to be taking that job. Well, no, we have nine hours to do it. It might still be around. Oh, I need to put in gear. It might still be around after we take our nap. We can take a nap in our garage, so I'll show you that. So just pull in. Now that logo there, you'll be able to manage your garage. You can do that from the menus, though. But now that we're in there, we can hit E to turn off our engine. And then hit enter or the A button, in my case, from with my keybinds, and we'll take a nap. And we'll take a nine-hour nap. Now, thankfully, we still have 40 minutes to get to our job, so we can still do that one. Now you can either pull forward and go out the back and this gate will open, or you could have just reversed out. It's up, totally up to you how you how comfortable you feel. Uh, your garage will change in appearance as you upgrade it, uh, but the same basic rule there does apply. It's only going to take us five minutes to get there, and I believe we still have uh, 40 minutes to get the job. Now, unfortunately, that does mean that some of our time to get there can't really see over to the right, but... Turn left. What did I run into? I didn't run into a... <laughs> well, that's a lovely start. Is that guy right in front of me? <laughs> Whoops. No, oh, I don't think I got a ticket there. Keep left, and then turn left. Do as I say, don't do as I do. <laughs> I was so worried about whether someone was coming from the right there, I wasn't looking in front of me. Alright, let's let's get into this. Well, and there you just got an example of damage and things. I have no idea if it's green light or not. I can't see the light. It is not. We could have gone, but... That truck was kind of a... I should have pulled forward. <sighs> yeah, Mouse is a little scatterbrained this morning. Hopefully we don't have too many mistakes. So I can't see the light at all. So I'm going to go into third person here. Okay, now it should be going. And there's nobody coming the other way. Let's go back into first person. So hopefully I don't make too many more mistakes like that. Go straight on. So you're getting a good example of Sky and the kind of stuff that she says, and it really does help when you are not as focused as maybe you should be, like I am right now. Um, just make sure you don't miss your turnings and things. Just again, keep in mind that sometimes she tells you things that aren't accurate, so still be watching your navigation system. Most of the time, I'd say 95% of the time, if not more, uh, you can trust what she's saying, but... Alright. <laughs> Hopefully we can clean it up here. Alright, so this is the job I wanted to take. So we still have... Till Friday at 2 in the morning. A little over after that. It is a 7 hour job. So let me think about this. This is going to be actually pretty tight. Because I had to take a nap. I didn't know that would be happening, so... Uh, it is what it is. We could always take this other job if we feel more comfortable with it. Uh, but again, I want to take the ferry here. You know the ferry is going to add time on. Not a lot of time. I'm going to take this job anyway. It might give us a learning That's lesson of what happens if we don't get there in time. Uh, I haven't done that in a very long time. So honestly, I don't remember. So if we fail this job, well, you can learn through my failures <laughs> that I've been doing so far. All right, almost. There we go. Okay, here we go. I should be saying what the keybinds are, I apologize for that. So that was the default T key to hook up the trailer, and I was hitting the number two key to switch my view, and then the number one key to switch back. 
Okay. Turn right. All right, we look. Yeah, uh, well, people are coming, but I think we'll be all right. So let's pay attention to our trailer. Make sure we don't get it hung up. Looks good. Okay, and this is where we're going to need to be focused. So where am I going? Looks like going straight through. So right lane is good. Straight on. I'm going to pull forward a little bit so I'm not blocking the way. All right. So from here on, I'm going to try and be a little bit more focused for you guys. As it's going to be important. <laughs> Now, that little bit of damage I took isn't that big of a deal. Uh, I don't think I got a ticket uh, because it wasn't a very significant impact. Usually, it has to be much higher speeds than what I did there. I, that, honestly, that vehicle surprised me but because I did not see it at all. But that could have just been me, my lack of focus at the time. But in any case, uh, you know, things like that happen. Uh, you as a newer player probably make occasional mistakes like that. Now, it is going to add up, though, because our, our, our vehicle will take wear and tear damage. 2%, I mean, that's actually kind of heavy considering we just bought the truck, but the big problem you have in Euro Truck Simulator versus American Truck Simulator, and one of the things that makes this game much more difficult in some regards, is in American Truck Simulator, you have insurance, and your insurance is going to pay most of your repair costs. And your truck simulator, you don't have that, and but the costs are about equivalent. So the repair costs and the maintenance of your trucks are substantially more expensive in your truck simulator than they are in American truck simulator. So being careful in defensive driving is is pretty important. So that little bit of a mistake I made early on, although it's not necessarily that big of a deal. I'm gonna go ahead and put my lights on even though it's not quite dark yet, just so I, I don't forget. Keep right. It will cost me later. All right, so we're gonna be turning right here. Use a little bit of engine brake here, although uh, we're not going anywhere near what the speed limit is, so we'll just keep going. Make sure there's nobody there. Looks good. And that's one of the things about this game, too. Is I consider it a lot of fun. But it definitely does uh, require uh, attention to detail and, and things. So, it is what it is. Alright, so let's listen to what Sky's going to tell us. If she's going to tell us anything. I'm disappointed in you and Sky. We had a, a thing change there. All right, so this is where the retarder is going to come in. So you might be able to see on my dash there, that yellow light. That's letting me know my retarder is on. And that is why I selected it. Because if I didn't have a retarder, that bit, I would have been going faster than the speed limit. It makes using cruise control, which I currently have on, much easier. So if you're not really familiar with the new Actros and what the interface is, let's go ahead and take an opportunity and pause and go over it real quickly. So this is our speedometer, that has our kilometers an hour. This is our rev counter. This isn't really relevant to us because we're using an automatic transmission, but if you later want to switch over to either of the manual setups, it's good to watch this and watch where the AI is shifting and what gears they're shifting into to kind of learn a little bit how to do things. Here's our fuel gauge. Uh, actually, I see two gauges that look like fuel gauges, so I'm honestly not sure which one's <laughs> what's what there. Uh, and if we want to change this information panel, we can't do it from pause, but when I uh, unpause here, I can hit the I key. And it will change what is displayed here. So this one is our fuel economy. I have to watch here a bit because we have to merge. Looks good. So the top is what our current fuel economy is. The bottom is the lifetime of the truck. And you can, well, I say lifetime of the truck. I think you can reset the trip a distance that it's going to watch, but I'm never going to do that. So this would be the lifetime of the truck. So this will get more of an average the more we do this. This is going to be our temperature. I don't really find this necessarily all that useful. Honestly, I don't know. It's, this is air pressure. So I'm guessing for our air brakes. And this is just our current speed. So if you want to get a nice big indicator of what our speed is, that's one way to do it. And then this is our, our fuel. 
the first bit, I believe, and it might not be easy to make these out on uh, me streaming this and on screen. I'm also not probably driving my lane the best while I'm doing this, but uh, the first bit I'm assuming is our range because it looks like I'm just making out. I think that says kilometers. So that's our estimated range with the fuel we have. Our fuel tank is at currently 1,100 liters. And then how full we are is that bar. So whatever you like here, you can set up. Um, honestly, I think I'm going to go with the probably the fuel gauge. Yeah, fuel gauge. And then uh, below the fuel gauge, by the little thing that looks like a, a speedometer, is uh, what my cruise control is set to. So it's set to 80. And then the A11, that's what gear I'm in. So I'm, it's an automatic transmission, and it's currently in 11 gears out of the 12 that the, the transmission has. So that gives you a rundown of what we're looking at here, because you guys will probably see the interface of this truck for some time, as I'll be driving it for a little while here. Okay, so... We started off this journey uh, on a little bit of a rough patch, and some of that is because I came out of a quick contract tired, and honestly, I didn't realize that it transferred over into... All right, we're going to go ahead and merge over here because there's a little bit of a traffic jam. We know we can easily pass here. I didn't realize it transferred over from your quick jobs because when you're doing the quick jobs, you always are given rest in between jobs. Well, I did a long distance delivery on the last job I did before I uh, got back into covering the tutorial and my guy was pretty darn tired. So I put a little bit of a damper on things, but the job I had more than nine hours to take and you rest in this game for nine hours An American Truck Simulator, you rest for 10 hours. So just keep that in mind. When you're doing things now if i hadn't had to rest that nine hours would have been an allowance to do this job because the time it's expected is the same regardless of how much time is left on the ex the the expiration of the job so that would have definitely been a benefit but here it's going to be a little tighter i maybe have a couple hours and if you're ever curious well how much time do i have left on the job based off of my estimated time uh, of arrival uh like so I'm estimated to get there in five hours and 10 minutes. So if I hit start, it's going to tell me that there is six hours and 38 minutes remaining on the job. So I may or may not have the time to finish this. Now, one good thing is I did want to show you guys some night driving. And it looks like because I had to rest for nine hours, we are going to be getting that because we still have five hours to go here on this job. Now that time is variable, so our arrival estimated time is at uh, 0, 0.5500 hours. But you'll note that that would go up and down depending on what I'm doing. So because I'm driving the speed limit, I'm doing you know as much speed as I'm legally able to. I suspect that that time will go down slowly. Yeah, it's just dry, it's starting to dip down into. Uh, A little bit sooner and I'll again we have a little bit of a traffic hitch and of course this will add time because we're going much slower than the navigation system expects us to go because we're not going anywhere near the speed limit but that's not our fault that's what the game did there is an accident here so we had to slow down to allow traffic to come through okay we can get back over if we so choose I wonder if this guy's gonna get over. We talked about how, in the in the previous stream, we talked about how passing on the right is, in Germany, is kind of a no-no. But the guy's not getting over, so screw him. <laughs> All right, so cruise control got back on, and for me, I am using the uh, D-pad to the left with the keybinds I showed in the first series. As far as your default keybind, I'm pretty sure it's the C key. Let's just double check that because I honestly don't remember what the default key is. So just go to keys and buttons. Pretty sure it's the C key. Yeah, cruise control C. And then for me, it's D-pad left based off of how I set things. 
I find that a very important keybind if you're doing long distance highway trips. Because although you don't necessarily need it, it just is much smoother to be able to sit back and relax and let the cruise control do your speed control. And it gives you a lot more confidence that you're not going to be caught speeding. So as long as you're paying attention to your navigation system and your speed, and by the way, that is something that you can tell Sky to track, so to do that. We just come in, we go to the audio. And if we come down here, speed warning, we could turn that on to uh, a couple different settings. So let's just turn it on to voice for right now. I've honestly never done this, so I don't know what to expect, but let's give it a test. So, you don't have to turn off your cruise control to accelerate, so let's just hold on the accelerator. Let's see if she starts yelling at me. Caution. Please watch the speed limit. And there you go. So, if you want to turn that on, feel free to do so. I'll leave it on for now. Now, I had to speed quite a bit there before she warned me, but... And that's just going to be a good help there. If you're riding along, you're relaxing, and there's a sudden speed change, like it's now 80 kilometers an hour speed limit, but maybe there would be a drop down to 50 as you enter a town, and if you're not paying attention, you may miss that. She would give me a warning right away. So, there's definitely a lot of avenues of convenience here, and with our cruise control with the retarder, that retarder will kick on any time that uh, the cruise control needs to slow down. Let's say it's downhill. If you don't have the retarder, there's no way for the cruise control to really slow down. It's going to cut the engine, but that's about as much as it can do. So you'll start speeding up over time, right. depending on how. And then exit right. And there you go. If I wasn't paying attention, I maybe I missed this exit, but it's kind of hard to miss it because there's exit. no way of going right. that way. Now we need to slow down. For the ramp. Get ready to turn left. Now she's telling me to get ready to turn left, which is indeed correct. Oh, good. We we hit the light perfectly. Turn left. So plenty of time. Take your time. Make sure you take your turns wide so you don't run into anything. Okay, we have to turn left again. So let's get Keep prepared left, for that. And then turn left. Speed limits 50 kilometers. Went a little too fast, but we're gonna break here soon. And another thing I'm going to tell you that I didn't really cover in my last tutorial, but might be important for you, is I highly recommend throughout the course of your missions. Oop, that's the wrong button. I hit the button next to it. Is to give yourself job saves. So what I classify this is, is oftentimes I'll do this when I first take a job. That way, if something happens and, and I have to reload a save or what have you, I... Don't have to remember what job I wanted to take. I've already taken it, so I can just load in that, that job save and I'm good to go. But also, when you have moments like this where I know I have to stop, let's say you've got a toll booth, you've got a, you've got a yield sign or a stop sign, where you know you're gonna have to stop and look around and make sure nobody's coming. These are great times to do a save, because normally when you load a save, you are at a dead stop. Well. We're already at a dead stop, so it doesn't really matter. Now, you will load in with your engine off and not in gear, but still, it's not as big of a deal as loading a save in the middle of the highway uh, where you were previously going 80 kilometers an hour, and now you find yourself at a dead stop with the engine off. Another thing that is interesting with the, the loading of a save file is that all the AI cars will go away. And then they'll be, uh, they'll start spawning back in, but initially when you first load in that save, all the vehicles that were there when you saved it the, the previous time, they'll be gone. So if your problem was AI vehicles, well, by loading that save, they won't be there anymore. So, all right, so anyway, back on course. So we're just looking to make sure nobody's coming and hopefully we're doing a better job of it this time. Okay, looks good. I didn't put my turn signal on, but... <laughs> Uh, 
All right, so I'm going too fast, and that, a lot of that is because I'm not paying attention. But then again, we have our cruise control to help us out Get here. So to turn right. got that cruise control on. And I oftentimes use control, cruise control even in towns. If there's nobody really in front of me and I don't have to worry about too much slowing down and things. Turn right. And obviously, I have to slow down for this, but as I brake, the cruise control comes off, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay, so where we're going right now is we're going to where the ferry is. So we're going to the port here. And we're going to get on. Now, the ferry does cost money and it does take time to get there. This is Caution. a ferry. Please mind the speed limit. See, there she's telling me, watch out for your speed. I'm not too worried about it because there's usually not cops in this area, but there may be find speed cameras. Route, okay, let's find a new route. Okay, so to get here, we just come to this. We uh, Default key is enter, or in our case, the A button on our, our controller. And we need to go... Now, this is one of those situations where you have to really pay attention to your route. So if you're not 100% sure, you can always exit out of here, look at your map, and look. But I happen to know we're trying to get to Copenhagen. We need this ferry. But our alternate path that we could take here is over there, which is not really what we want. So we're going to come here. We get to see how much that time that would take. Now we're 45. I really honestly don't know if we're going to make this trip in time, but we'll try. And then our price, 404. So we're going to go ahead and embark. Finding a new route. So that's going to take time. Now, one advantage of using a ferry is it will give your guy rest if it's a longer ferry trip. I don't know about that short ferry trip we just took. Maybe it gave us a little bit of rest. You guys could uh, probably see that more because I would, really didn't pay mind to it. So here we are. And again, that was another point where you could have gone ahead and given yourself a job save. You've done something significant. So we're expected in an hour and 58 we have three hours and a, yeah, okay, so we have plenty of time. So let's not worry about that time anymore. 